Are you looking for a daily stand-up meeting template? Perhaps something just like this. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this template from scratch. I'll be giving you some formatting recommendations to speed up the process and also some tips and suggestions for populating it and using it going forward. Now, if you are short of time, I have made this pre-built pre-formatted template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick it up. Nevertheless, let me now show you exactly how to create this yourself from scratch. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do is that you give your document a title, something like daily stand-up meetings. That way, if you ever share this document with other stakeholders, they know exactly what they are looking at. Also, it's easy if you just navigate over to it you know, during your day and you want to know what you've got open in front of you. So in B2, I've just put daily stand-up meetings. I've bolded that and I'm going to increase the font size to around 20 or so. If you select A1 and go through to say K2 and then choose a fill color, I'm going to use a light gray, but you can use different colors depending on your organization, your branding, etc. The same goes for the font as well. What I would suggest that you then do is in say B4, you could put something like team name or it could be project name. Just give a little bit of insight into who will be responsible for or included in these daily stand-up meetings. So we'll do team name for now, but as I say, you could put project name or you could create another content area for that. So I've just typed team name in B4, bolded that. I'm gonna put a all border around it. So on the home ribbon, I'm going to go all borders. And I'm also going to put a gray on that. I'm also going to increase the font size to around 40, uh, 14. Let's bring this out a little bit. Then select B4 and B5. Control C on my keyboard. Then go into D4. Press Control V. That will copy all the formatting that we've just applied to B4 and B5. And this time we are going to call this week start date. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap this like this. And let's just put that into the middle like that. And we are going to put the first day of the week in here. This is going to be a date. So what we're going to need to do is right click in here, format cells, and then click on date. Now I'm based in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to use the United Kingdom type. But if you're in the, the States or elsewhere in the world, you can select from here and then you'll have dates that kind of make sense for where you're based. So let's just say today's date is the 25th of November. 2024. We're going to go with that as our example. Now we want to create the column headers. Okay, so we're going to build this out for the first day and then we are going to essentially copy and paste it once we've got all our formatting. So it just saves a lot of time. So we're going to go down to, let's just actually call this, we'll go down a couple. And so in B8, I'm going to put in Mun for Monday. Okay, we're going to bold that. And we're going to make this say 16. In here, in C8, we're going to put the date. So let's just say the 25th of November is a Monday. So we're going to put in here equals this cell here plus zero. Now, if you were to create, let's just say this document on a Sunday and it was due to start on the Monday, you'd put plus one. So the plus zero is the number of days to add to the date but we want it to be, we created this in the Monday morning. We want to use this in Monday afternoon as an example. I want to make this bigger as well. So we want that in size 16 just to match. And I'm going to bold it out as well. I'm going to put some, a slightly different color on this. So I'm going to use, so on the home ribbon, just go up here and put that into a green. Again, just to differentiate it and just make it kind of easier on the eye. Now we're going to create, create our tables. So the first header we're going to put in is task ID. That way you can give a unique number or identifier for each task to track and reference easily during discussions. You're gonna have a lot of tasks that come up. So it's really good to give each one a unique number. So I'm gonna put this in, so I've bolded that. I'm gonna put that into, we'll put that into a font size 12. I'm going to, on here, hover between row nine and 10. You'll see that little icon there. Left click and drag this down to about 30 or around about, it doesn't have to be precise. We just want this one to be bigger, the header. I'm also gonna put this middle align, and I'm also going to increase the indent by one. And to finish it off, we're gonna put a light gray on it. So that's the kind of formatting that we're gonna have for the rest of the table. So we're gonna have task ID, team member. This way we can name the person assigned to the task. 
we are going to have priority level, which enables us to categorize tasks via, via urgency. So it could be low, medium, or high. Just helps us to focus on critical work during standups. Task description, as the name suggests, just gives us the ability to expand upon what the task's about. I'm gonna make that column bigger. So I selected up the top here, saw that icon, left click and dragged across. We are then gonna have current progress and it's a good practice to use the percentage um, because then that way it's a little bit more easy to understand how far along you are on each task. Status, which is gonna be a drop down. I'll show you how to set it up shortly. But yeah, pretty much enables you to reflect the current task state. We want somewhere to document blockers and or issues, essentially any um, impediments, you know, that could result in the task not completing or perhaps not even going to plan and schedule. And then an area for notes and comments. So yeah, any additional updates, suggestions, observations that haven't been covered in the other columns. So I'm gonna make this bit bigger here. Now what I'm gonna do is select cell B9 because we've already formatted it. Click on the Format Painter in the Home ribbon. Left click on C9 and just drag across. And you'll see it's applied that formatting to all of those other ones. So it's just saved us a lot of time. We're then going to just put in, let's just say that here we're going to put say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But what we could do is we could put something like, um, like a hashtag and then we could put like zero one. And then actually I'll drag that down and then we're going to get something like that. And I'm going to increase, increase the indent. Now, when we start building the other tables, so let's just say for Tuesday, we can then go from say 11 or something like that. And we're going to keep working our way up until we probably have lots of different tasks. You know, we could have task 454 if we keep going with this process. So what we're now going to do is select from B9 through to I19 and I'm going to put a border on it. So that is the first table. Now, all we need to do is I'm gonna make some of these a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna hover over some of these columns and just bring them out. I think this would be better being a bit bigger here and, and notes and comments a bit bigger. So that's looking really good. Now, all we need to do is left click in B8 and drag all the way down to I19, press Control C, go into B21 and press Control V and then we do need to change a couple of things. So the first thing we need to do is call this Tuesday or Chu. And then in here, we want to do, just change this to D5 plus one. Now this one was plus zero. This is gonna be plus one. Now what we could do is we could put in a, a cell lock here just so that um, every time we copy it, it doesn't it doesn't change. It's all, it will always want to refer back to D5. So 26, 11, great. Now, we're going to put this as 11 and then if I click on here and drag down, it will do the next lot for us. So I change that to 11, then I hovered over to see this little icon, left click and drag down. Now this is all looking really good. So we've done Tuesday. Now again, select from B21 through to I32, control C, go in to B34, control V. This is going to be Wednesday. Now on here, this should be D5 plus two and everything's looking good. I just need to change this to 21 and then find this little icon, left click and drag down. So we've got halfway through the week. Let me just, because I put the cell reference on this one. Let me just uh, oh, ignore that. Yep, yeah, that's all good. Let me just copy from this one. So I'm going to go B8 through to I, 19, control C, we're gonna to go to the bottom here, B47, I'm gonna press control V. This is going to be Thursday, so I'm gonna put Thur, or I could just put that. Now, it's not done the cell reference properly, I put it in the wrong place. So it's gonna be D5 plus two, so plus three, 26, 27, 28, and we just need to change this to 31. And we need to set up some drop downs in a minute, so do keep watching. Um, let's do the next one. So B, I think the cell reference has to be in here. That's where it needs to be. So then if I go here, so B47 through to I58, Control C and Control V. 
yeah, that's worked. So I'll show you how that's worked. This is going to be Friday. Change that. You'll notice that's now remained as D5. So that, that dollar sign should be in the middle. Now this is going to be D4. So what she's essentially saying is four days on from whatever you put in this particular cell. So this cell is really important to keep that up to date. Now you can copy and paste this. This could be week beginning um, 25th. 11. You could you could call it that, something like that. You could call it something like that and um, copy and paste this for every week you need, or you could just keep adding to the bottom. It's completely up to you. Depends how what works for you. So we've created that. Now, all we need to do is we need to set up some drop downs. So basically, we want it to be that only certain fields can be entered into here. It will save you a lot of time. So the way I'm going to do that is we're going to create a key. So Click on this little icon here. I'm going to change the sheet to key. And I'm going to put it into the first position, but you could put it towards the end if you wanted to. Now, what we're going to want to do here is I'm actually going to go back into our main sheet here. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into B2 again. And I'm just going to call this key just again. So if anyone opens it up, they know what they're looking at. A1 through to H2 and we'll do that. Now we want a key for priority. And we also want one for status. I'm actually going to put that in this one, though. Again, I'm going to put uh, no, the, priori the priority is going to be low, medium, high. Let's put a table around that and just put that in a gray. Status, bold it as well. Um, let's control C, control V. Status is going to be, for now, something like not started, in progress, uh, completed, on hold. You could probably put cancelled as well. It may be that you don't not you know not every task goes ahead for whatever reason. So these are our, our basically our drop down options. So if you ever need to go back to change your drop down options, this is where you'd go. You go back into the key. Now we need to apply this to certain columns. So the first is the priority level. So I'm going to select all of D. Now what you can do here is you can hold the control button. And you can basically remove cells that you don't want the drop down list to apply to. So, for instance, we don't want it from D1 through to D9. We only want it to start appearing from D10. Again, we don't want it to appear on some of the others. So you can do that. You can hold control and you can manually go through. So you would basically take them off. But I find that a little bit more. Um, it takes more time than this other option. So select the full column, column D. Go to data at the top on the home on the ribbon. Then click on data validation, data validation, and then allow, you want to select list. So click that drop down and go to list. In the source left, click in here, then go into key and select your options. So we're only selecting B5 through to B7. So it's saying look in the, the key sheet and bring back what's available in here. If I press OK, you'll notice now we've got the drop downs in those columns in those cells in this column. Now, because I applied it to the whole column, you'll notice it's it's here and that just looks a bit messy. So to remove it, just select those cells. So D1 through to D9. Go on the data ribbon if you're not pre-selected on it. Data validation, data validation, and change the allow to any value. And it will just remove it from those you don't want it on. Okay, and it still applies to the ones you do. Now, we still do have some it's not applied to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Control on my keyboard, I'm holding that down and I'm just selecting all of these that we don't want it on. So these three, these, and I've let go of control now, data validation, data validation, and change this to any value. So data, data validation, any value. So now it's not gonna be there, it's not gonna be there, but it will be in all those others. So it's in all of the cells we need it in. Now, one thing I haven't done is this is about 30 height. I need to apply that to these ones as well. You want it to be the same. So what you can do is you can use the same concept. So select this, hold control, hold control, you know, keeping control held down. Now it does also zoom you out. Let go of control, hold control again. Let go of control, hold control again. Select all of those. I'm going to hold control and zoom in. Now I'm going to change all of these rows to the same. So let's go 31.5. So now we've got that uniform look. So now we just need to do the status. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So let's just go through that process again. So select column G, data validation, data validation, allow, list, source, click in here, 
and then go back to our key, click in here, select this, so D5 through to D9, because we, we want these options this time, press OK, and now our status options are in here. Fantastic. Again, we just need to remove it from ones we don't want. So I'm going to go G1 through to G9. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard, and I'm going to select this one, this one, this one. Control on my keyboard, this one, this one, this one. Control on my keyboard, this one, this one, this one. Control on my keyboard, this one, this one, this one. Data validation, data validation, allow any value. And now we have a daily standout meeting template that we can use going forward. If you click view and change the grid lines off, it looks a little bit neater, a little bit more professional. So I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And that said, best of luck with your daily stand-up meetings, and I hope you have an excellent day.